Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. I'm Josh Davis. Michael Freeman. And if you'd like to uh, join us for the conversation live on Mondays, you can find us at youtube.com slash user slash Curve of Anarchy. That's Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And you can find the final product uh, for at least the near term at uh, Voluntary Virtues, youtube.com slash users slash Voluntary Virtues. And that's posted Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we also have uh, a quick advertisement to show you. Holly Cogburn runs Homebody, a body care, vanity, and cosmetic products company. She contracts using USD, Bitcoin, and barter. She is proud to say that she started the business without the assistance of bank loans. In her words, fuck bank loans and fuck their interest rates. For the most part, fuck banks. She has paid her startup costs out of pocket and has steadily and sustainably grown from there. She believes in a free, fair, and reputation-based market, relying on word of mouth. So please, find Holly at homebodyco.com or facebook.com slash homebodyco. Well, welcome back. So uh, we want to talk about uh, ourselves for a minute. We're going to be arrogant and uh, egotist over here for a minute. Um, actually, I'm going to uh, let you go first, Michael. You're the one that came up with this actually cool idea. You know, uh, So who are you, Michael? Well, you can call me Greg House. I'm just a straight through and through narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, this is, um, at least since I've been on air with you, this is our first time just going head to head, you know, peer to peer. We've always had a guest since I've been involved. And unfortunately, Lance wasn't able to make it tonight, um, which sucks because we had a really awesome topic to talk about. But uh, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be back. He'll get back in the fight. He just had some, some stuff at work, so... Mm -hmm. uh, so I, th you know, I figured we would use this opportunity to to have a sit down, you know, just the two of us, and get get romantic with it. W what do you think? Yeah, sounds good. Um, uh, wh what exactly are you talking about? Like, uh, what do you do for work, or you know, that kind of thing? What do you mean? All right, I'll go first. You want to play twenty questions? Is that what we should do? I suppose <laughs> we could do this for fifteen minutes or so. <laughs> okay, I, I'm not serious. Like, um, so what did you do this week, Josh? Like, what is going on in your life? Like, tell me a little bit about about yourself rather than your your politics, philosophy, and economics. Okay. Um. So personally, uh, yeah, I live in Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh, I work in Waltham. I'm a software engineer, uh, and I've been working there actually not for very long. Uh, for since the summer. Um, I was unemployed for some time uh, before that, and before that, I was working for a defense contractor. Actually, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, and that's in that's in Tewksbury now. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of nice because a I was fired, b I wasn't feeling like I should be there anyway. So I I think my work ethic fell off because of my politics, as it were. So. Um, in any case, uh, I'm a software engineer. I live in Lowell. Um, I now uh, uh, have a girlfriend who I've been with uh, since the summer, and uh, she moved up here from New York City, and um, just to well, not just to be with me, but uh, <laughs> I'm kind of coaxing her to go wherever I go. Apparently, um, <laughs> that's um, how it goes. Yeah, right. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, I'm a big, like, game board kind of guy. Uh, game board game kind of guy. Board, uh, board, board game? Board games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Board games, game board, board games. Um, I like movies. Uh, I, I play bass, but I don't uh, play it as often as I used to in college, so um, my I haven't enhanced my ability at all on that. But, well, uh, yeah. Now that we're all friendly and and buddy buddy, I think that's gonna that's gonna change. Uh oh. Okay, you're gonna change me. Huh? <laughs> what? Well, yeah. What do What do you do? Do you play guitar or? Yeah, dude. I um, I've played guitar since I was I think nine. Um, I play piano. Well, I don't want to say I play piano. I I can modulate synth a little bit, right? <laughs> um, 
Uh, I play upright bass, I play drums, um, guitar bass, uh, every variation of guitar. I dabble in sitar and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just music's just kind of like a natural thing for me. I'm not like educated. I I can't read music. Yeah, yeah. But um, but it's in yeah, you. yeah. It's just in me a little bit. I've been doing it my whole life, and it's like a natural thing. I I thoroughly enjoy it when I. All right. I mean, we're, if we're gonna get on me, this is gonna have to come into the story a little later. I don't want to overly foreshadow. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, there isn't much more to me. Uh. You know, I, I just turned 30, so I'm not too happy about that. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I've been out of college, and, uh, you know, I really do miss it quite a bit. Uh, where, did, where did you go? I went to college in uh, Connecticut, uh, the University of Hartford. Okay. Uh, it was So this college actually is right on the edge of Hartford and West Hartford. And uh, so it had a mix of both, like the big city vibe and kind of like a downtown kind of hippie kind of vibe, if you will. Um, so I, I liked West Hartford a lot myself. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, that that's really it. I mean, I got nothing. So <laughs> well, you had actually like five minutes of something. So I don't know if that okay. is, <laughs> that equates to nothing. But all right, <laughs> so all right. How about myself? Um, so I'm Michael Freeman. My real last name is King, which is awfully fucking ironic. <laughs> you know, I... Uh, hi, where do I start? I, I was born in, in Newport, Rhode Island. Um, you know, my, my pops was in the Navy, stationed in, in Groton, Connecticut, in the sub-base, right? And, uh, you know, he died when I was six going on seven. So fast forward a little bit, um, you know, I, I moved to Rhode Island with my mother. The Navy gives her this settlement, yada, yada, yada. And she's kind of a drunk, like, but not like the kind of functional drunk that I am. Like, she's like a horribly, um, you know, like a wreck, like non-functional at all. And, uh, like one day she she drove into head on traffic and like paralyzed the guy from his neck down, so I kind of become a ward of this. Well, at first it's like ward of this. I am a ward of the state under DCYF custody, but at first they try to switch me from family member to family member, which doesn't end up working out. So eventually I end up in group homes at, towards the end, you know. So uh, so I was like raised by the state. Um, which is fine and dandy because I learned a good thing or two. I learned how to make crack cocaine and, and all this good stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so from there, I eventually somehow graduate high school after going to summer school after my senior year. Oh, there's this one part I don't want to get into, but I'm going to do it anyways if we're going to be open. So I, I have a high school sweetheart, and we decide to kind of join the military together. And we did, and later on we got married when I was 19 years old. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was that there. Is, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I was in the Army for, for a good while there, and which is also kind of still being raised by the state. So I was raised by the state for about 15 years. And eventually I left, um, got divorced, whatever, whatever. Um, and after I left, like I started to understand that things that I was doing in the military were perpetuating the initiation of violence on people who posed no threat to me ever in my life, and that's morally wrong. And I started to question things, and I went through this big process of like, you know, conspiracy theorist to like LP to libertarian to ANCAP to like I don't I don't know where I'm at right now. I'm like a Angry fucking old man, really. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't tolerate any of these stupidisms. I want to abolish everything in the world. Like, let's just end humanity right now. Um, not really, not really that far, you know. So, uh, so you're, you're a mutualist. No, no, <laughs> no. Uh, what am I? I? Don't know. I'm an abolitionist, man. Yeah. So right. So, so I get out of the army, come back here, and I dabble in a, a few failed uh, careers like I did security for a little while and I didn't enjoy that I I played music in bars for a little while and 
I basically made like 40 bucks a gig, and that's not going to pay the rent. So that didn't pan out. But I got free beers, which is great. Right. Um, <laughs> so now I live in Bristol. I, I just moved to Bristol, Rhode Island with my girlfriend, Karen, who's like a anarcho-curious-ist. <laughs> um, and uh, I kind of I do activism. I do this show. I got some other shit in the works. And, yeah. you know, I collect a, a welfare whore check from the from the government for my, my veteranism. Yeah. Well, it's good to be open. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, actually, when you were talking about uh, you got married at 19, I was, I was almost on that boat. I, uh, <clears throat> um, I proposed to somebody at the age of 19, and then, or was it 19? Yeah, and then, like, Two months afterwards, uh, she broke up with me anyway. So it was like, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter. But uh, yeah. young and dumb and pretending to be in love. That's it. That's that's <laughs> exactly what it was. I think. Um, yeah. I really thought I was, but you didn't. You know, you know how it is. And um, what was it? Uh, something else came to mind. Um, I lived in Middleton when I was a kid. Uh, I was born in Salem. Lived in Middleton. Oh, you were born in Salem? Salem, Mass, yeah. And Do you I have lived power? In... <laughs> Do you have powers? No, no. <sighs> Shut up, Michael. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. All I'm saying is um, I lived there for a little time. And it's only like two or three towns over. And then uh, I moved to Salem when I was like 12 or something. And um, my father went to... Um, North Carolina uh, before that, and he uh, he was injured heavily, and so we had to move to Salem or away from where we were. The um, mortgage couldn't be paid. Was he cursed? So... <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't help myself. Um, yeah, yeah. So I basically lived with my mother and my sister till. Um, I went to college, and uh, you know my mother got married or whatever, so I was living with other people as well. But uh, <laughs> so you know my life is um, in flux, as everybody's is, of course. Um, so my li my life is not in flux, buddy. Flux. Well, uh, it's ever changing, and I'm not going to say it's like constantly like bad or constantly good. It's it's just, you know, constantly evolving or whatever. And um, I, I learned a lot, you know, by, um, you know, just being without my father, actually. I learned a lot uh, about my life before, and while I was living with him, and after that, um, in both good and bad ways. I, I think I improved myself because I learned something from it, you know what I'm saying? See, see, that's something that I can't really relate to, um, really? the father aspect. You know, my father died when I was six, and I have about five memories of him, right? So, so to me, it's not like, this is going to sound cold-hearted, um, but it's not like I lost my father, you know? It's more like I never experienced it in the first place. Yeah. So I don't feel this... this you know, eternal loss. I don't feel this, this, this grieve. You know, I, I, it's just like something I don't comprehend. Yeah. Like I, wh what you just said there, like I don't even know how to relate because I, I have never experienced those kinds of feelings before. Right. Right. I'm like a like a a robot, man. No, you're certainly not a robot. I'll tell you that. Um, I wish that I was. <laughs> Sometimes I think that too. Dude, if I could shoot beams from my hand, like free, if the, just free the market and let that shit happen already, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think it's good to have the emotions, but it's it, it's just another thing to check it, you know, just to keep it in check is all I'm saying. Um, why, I, don't you, I, why don't you why don't you check your living father privilege, huh? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think we're on the same page, though. But, um, uh, yeah, anything else you want to add about yourself? Or? 
Questions? Or? Questions. Yeah. So... What was it like to be a ward of the state? I've never... There's a question for you. Sure. Um... I mean, it was like normalcy to me. I was used to it. It wasn't like a big change. I once my dad died, like you know, the state was involved in my upbringing hardcore. Never the, like outside of government schooling. Um, always checking in on the family. Uh, you know, all that good stuff. And it was just the norm for me. Um, yeah. You know, just like the military, like, yeah, it sucked a lot, but I saw the ins and outs. I learned ex firsthand exactly why this this hallucinated institution is illegitimate. Yeah. Which is a good talking point, right? Yeah. You know, it's nice to be able to, like the veteran thing, it's nice to be able to talk to other veterans. And, uh, you know, I make some anti-military sentimented statements. And most veterans will be like, oh, well, if you didn't, maybe you should go serve two years in those boots before you start talking about that, right? Well, I can come into it already being a veteran, right? And, and they'll, you know, take my word with a slightly more grains of salt. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that does it for me, though. Like, that was cool, though. You know, just change it up, do something different. Yeah, right. All right. What about, aren't you going to New Hampshire, though? I'll be moving to New Hampshire, yeah. Um, I In about six months, yeah. Um, we already live, but Lowell is only about ten minutes away from Nashua, and that's precisely where I want to live. And, um, and we go up there because, you know, it's uh, cheaper up there, and actually they have a couple good restaurants that we like. Um, and, you you know, can carry guns. Ah, uh, well, you know me. I know, I know. It's not your thing, and that's fine. I, you know, I don't currently even own guns because I have to sell my stuff all the time. But uh, you know, you actually have the option there, where if you try to open carry in Massachusetts, you're probably going to get murdered. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think they have much of a problem, but Nashua might be a little bit more liberal than the rest of that state, but I don't... No, because gun laws aren't, aren't county or, or town, it's a state. Thing. Right, but it's not um, very uh, frequent that you see someone with uh, a gun. Well, it's concealed, but still. <laughs> or actually, it's open carry, you said, right? In New Hampshire. Yeah, open carry, right. Yeah, so yes. Um, well, yeah, it's a, it's a, sh it's a okay. shall issue state. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, yeah, I'll be moving to New Hampshire. Um, it'll be awesome, I think. Um, it's already cold here, and uh, my girlfriend can't really take the cold, and uh, so moving up to New Hampshire, it's only one more degree colder, so. <laughs> You know, yeah, I'm I'm an hour south of you, and it's already too cold for me. So let's yeah. say I go up an hour to you, and then up another hour to Keene. <sighs> oh no, no, no! Well, it's more like uh, Keene is more like west. Uh, okay, it's a little more north, obviously, but yeah, it's more west. It's about an hour or forty-five to an hour from here, but. It's most yeah you get it. So it's only about another degree colder. <laughs> How far is Lancaster? Oh, that's up there. Yeah, that's up there. Yeah, it's four. It's four hours from me, and I think that I'm an hour from you. So. Yeah, yeah, it's up there. All right. Uh, Lancaster is close to. Um, ah, oh, what's the name of that place? There was a Rogers ski Campground. Uh, there's a ski the Behind Freedom there. Festival. Yeah, have you heard of uh, the Snowy Owl? No. no. I think it's a real animal, but no, not, not a place. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's, uh, this, um, it's a ski resort up there. We went up there one time. Um, it's, it's just past Plymouth, uh, New Hampshire. Anyway. I'm sorry. So, I'm not familiar. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <clears throat> but, yeah, let's move on with the show here. Um, so you found out that Jeff Tucker wrote a piece about – legalizing drunk driving, and it was along the same lines as Lou Rockwell's piece from about 10 years ago, I believe? 
Oh, you love just throwing, just throwing me on the spot, oh, don't you? Hey, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I All right. Me, All right, Josh, I'll get you back. So, <laughs> so a few days ago, Jeffrey Tucker, who who I admire, I think he's a great dude. Um, I met him at Pork Fest, and he's a he's a drinker like I am, and his panel it was like about Bitcoin and crypto freedoms. Um, and he was drinking bourbon in his coffee at 10 o'clock in the morning. So, so I want to start this by saying that I really do have utmost respect for Jeffrey Tucker. If you're drinking hard liquor before <laughs> breakfast, you earn my respect. <laughs> uh, and he obviously has great ideas. He's a great man. He's very compassionate, uh, peaceful person. He promotes free markets like nobody's business, right? However... Um, I, I think Friday it was, or Thursday, he came out with an article called Legalized Drunk Driving. And I fully agree with his points. His talking points are a exactly where I would come from, and I fully agree with everything that he had to say. However, uh, 10, 15 years ago, when Clinton was in office, another libertarian columnist, Lou Rockwell, who I'm sure anybody listening to this show is aware of, wrote a, a, an article called Legalized Drunk Driving with separate talking points but the same conclusion and you know I slightly feel that there's a little plagiarism uh, plagiarism <laughs> I don't know <laughs> whatever I feel like there's some plagiarizing going on right <laughs> <laughs> but anyways you know I just wanted to see what 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 you had to say Josh maybe if we have uh, the forum going on and people are, are, are talking in, see what they have to say about it. Um, I'm fully in support of, well, I don't think you need to legalize anything. I think that you don't need permission to, to act peacefully. Um, I think that the, the, the very notion of DUI laws are based in pre-crime, and right. I don't believe that there is a crime committed until someone is victimized, whether it's them, their property, you know, what have you. So I just wanted to toss that idea around and see what you thought about it. I, I uh, remember talking about Lou's article about a year or two ago on the currency of democracy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, a, uh, it was brilliant, in my opinion, because it satisfies my need to get rid of the status roads. So, <laughs> um, but in any case, drunk driving specifically is uh, not a crime. It's uh, it's dangerous. It's stupid. Absolutely asinine, in my opinion. And uh, to be quite honest, um, excuse me, when I was in college, uh, I used to uh, drive while drunk, not necessarily drinking and driving, but yeah, it was stupid, absolutely asinine. Um, it's immature. However, if you do not actually hurt anybody, you're not committing a crime. You're not um, just allow the person who is driving drunk to get home. You know that's what you want them to do in the first place, right? Just let them get home, sleep it off. And nobody will be the wiser. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's also um, this brings up the point of like speeding. And, uh, you know, there is no such thing as speeding, really. It's an arbitrary number that police allow me to pass constantly every day. You know, the speeding limit around here is 55 on the highway, but I'm going 75. They allow it. I'm. Um, their their actual limit, you know, according to what I've learned over the years, is 80. <laughs> that's that's what I know. Um, they don't care enough because there's too many people that are doing the same exact thing. Everybody's going 70, 75, um, 65, whatever. And when it's raining, 55. It it, it varies. It it doesn't matter. You know, uh, it's the same. Principle, uh, you know, your it's all arbitrary. Uh, there, it, it isn't law. It is not a uh, law. Would be uh, do not harm anybody, do not steal from somebody. That's law, you know. So this is just legislation passed down so they can get some money. Uh, the state can get some money 
to fund itself and continually, you know, up the rules and change the rules and that that's what it's for, I think. You know, I'd I'd like to ask like where does I find myself saying this far too often, but it's yeah. necessary. Where yeah. does one draw the line? Like yeah. there are certain states right now pushing prohibition of eating while driving and and, and you know the argument for for DUIs, DWIs, whatever your your uh, respective state respective, I don't mean that. Whatever your state does, um, you know, it, it differs, but it's basically the same thing from state to state. They just use different legal jargon to describe it. Um, I don't see much of a difference between drunk driving and driving while tired, or driving while on a cell phone, or driving while changing your radio station, or driving while eating a hamburger. You know, it's the same level of impairment. You are not paying attention no, you know what? I would also go as far as to argue to people who are limitedly drunk, maybe 0.15 or 1.8 to 1.5, who, people who are not stumbling and crashing into everything, probably drive safer than the rest of us because they have this thing in the back of their mind that if they get pulled over, they're likely to have their life ruined by police even if they victimize no one, destroy no property, or commit no malicious acts whatsoever. Yeah. So that inclines me to drive much safer. Not that I advocate drinking and driving. I think it's a terrible idea. Right. right. However, unless you victimize somebody, who is anybody else to say boo? Right. Um, see, my thing is, in uh, a free society, if we were to have such a thing, <clears throat> um, and of course, we've gone over this term where society might be just a you know, random word for a group of people, but whatever. In a free society, let's say uh, the businesses actually own roads, right? We might still see security guards, you know, patrolling the highway, as it were. But um, maybe the rules will be completely different. You know, um, we talked about, uh, or I used to talk about um, Walter Block's articles about, you know, the roads and everything. Um, Dr. Block is, you know, notorious for these kinds of ideas and everything. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, right, right. Um, my thing is, let's. Or what he was stating is that maybe we could have one lane going at a maximum speed of 80. Uh, one lane will be going at a maximum speed of, uh, I don't know, 70, and another at 55. You know, pick your lane, go that speed, you know, and, um, or uh, things could be, you know, justified in a completely different way. You know, we're going off a topic here. Drunk driving is we do topic. That. We do that. Yeah, right. But, yeah, it seems like the whole thing to me is about driving in general. Um, you know, there are so many solutions. You know, who would pay for the roads? And I came up with this solution where if... If a road, uh, uh, I'm sorry, if you connect uh, your driveway to the road, then you have to pay for the connection. And let's say that you're a mall and you have two lanes and two lanes, so that's four connections. So you have to pay for those four connections. Um, it's just an idea, you know, like maybe. This is. Um, maybe you know toll roads would certainly still exist, especially on highways. But um, you know who would pay for the the town roads? I think that's a good solution. At least. All right, th this is about reason number four hundred and sixty-five that I do not call myself anarcho-capitalist. I do not believe in private roads in any way, shape, or form. Look, the roads are already built. Nobody has to build them. Nobody has to do anything like that. The roads are. Oh, how they're do I say there this? Until like the tide collapses. No, look, no. The problem is, what would happen in a, a society after that? You know, the the roads, the road exists. Sure, get a but, so get a truck, dude. If the road does, if the road isn't maintained by a four wheel drive truck, I mean, I don't, I don't see why that's my problem to to solve your problems. First of all, and, and second of all, who is, how are you, how in the Heck, are you going to regulate? Uh, not okay. That's the ter that's a terrible word. Yeah, How are you going to? 
Right, right. So, so roads are privately owned, and certain companies own parts of them, and private individuals own some of them, right? Um, who determines that? Who determines how to enforce that? DROs? Because how are you going to expand? Uh, the, if it gets down to a DRO or a private you know, security force, you're talking about on a near national level, and well, we, we both know how that goes. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. Um, why would it go national? And uh, you know, there wouldn't be such a thing as a nation anyway. So how could how could you No, the problem is uh, on an individual basis, you know, what's the case? You know, what's what's the issue? Okay, the mall wants to connect to the road. Uh, why isn't the road being paid or uh, why why won't the road allow the connection or uh, Look, I'll tell you Look, where I'm coming from is like I'm going to move freely, and unless I can clearly tell that this is your yard or your marked property, I'm going to go where I want to. Um, so if people start trying to buy up like the routes of travel, I'm not really going to abide by their by that. Uh, if I need to get from point A to point B, and I don't see that this is being clearly used for an exact reason other than travel, I'm going to travel and. I guess I'm going to get into a scuffle when it comes down to it, maybe. But yeah, because if, you, if you're going to try to tell me that you own the bridge, I'm going to cross your fucking bridge. I don't care if you have a troll or not. Uh, okay, so you can enter my building if uh, whether no. I say so or not. I, no, What's I'm talking about main, main, mainstream, mainway transportation routes is what I'm talking about. Your I-95. Whatever. Right. You're, so you're, you're post currently you're, you're paying for the mass pike. Well, I'm I'm not paying for a goddamn thing. Right. So <laughs> the, the problem is, uh, someone has to pay for it. At least, is Why? someone will have to pay for it in the end. So how do we pay for the roads? We collectively, apparently. I don't think that there is a reason to do that for one, um, and. Why not? Because of technology, because the fact that four-wheel drive exists. I mean, this is just one little tiny speck of the coin, but it's just the argument that I'm going to go with for, for now. But uh, why do we need to ma maintain roads if four-wheel drive off-road technology exists? Why do we need roads? For, for one, I mean, there's also the aspect of if you want to drive your non-off-wheel vehicle on the roads, you're probably going to have an incentive to pay for that or to help institute it or, or, or upkeep it. If Sears has a company and they want to have people come to their company, I'd say that they have quite an incentive to probably have the roads out front looking pretty good. Right, so that means uh, we're talking business. We're we're not talking about a centrally planned thing. Uh, if we had a centrally planned uh, road system as we do right now, it constantly degrades. So someone has to maintain it, uh, right? So I think I think that I just presented a pretty viable argument against that that counterpoint. To be honest, four wheel drive technology. And that is not my, my – that is – don't get me wrong. That is not my core belief in why roads are irrelevant. That's just the one – I don't know. You made the, the pothole maintenance argument, so that's the one I'm going to hark on. Well, they're irrelevant. I agree. I mean because eventually we're not going to need roads. I mean we just – we we have the technology to not need it. I agree. Right. I think the fact that we are using combustion engine yeah. fossil fuel automobiles is is utterly ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Corporatism at its fucking core. Yeah, right. So, um, um, but getting back to the fact that, I, I guess, jumping back to the fact <laughs> that Jeffrey, uh, you know, wrote the <laughs> in rebuttal to, or not a rebuttal, uh, in follow up. Uh, yeah, it, it's just like uh, I don't think that's a problem. I think that you know adds fuel to the fire for the argument. I, I don't call that, uh, you know, um, hurting Lou Rockwell's cause or anything like that. I think it's a good thing that he wrote something. If it came to his mind, if it's going to add to the drunk driving article, that's great. And, um, you know, the, the thing is, I see Walter Block as kind of, um, kind of like a, a, a side... Um, uh, like a source for them because you know they always talk or he's always talking about 
new ideas. You know, what are we going to do with the roads? Why should we get rid of collective roads or whatever, at least? Um, that kind of thing. That, that's all I'm saying. Uh, I think Jeffrey's fine. You know, no big deal. Oh, I think Jeffrey's a good guy. And, you know, I maybe I'm seeing it. Uh, maybe I was being a little biased. I, I have a a cognitive dissonance spot in my heart for Lou Rockwell, you know. Um, maybe it's like a movie relaunch, right? Like, uh, oh, God, I don't want to get started on The Amazing Spider-Man because that movie was freaking terrible. <laughs> but maybe it's something like that, you know. It's like the they redid um, Carrie or, or whatever movie. Um, I like Jeff, and it's good to have these ideas brought forward. I think that this is a totally victimless thing, and uh, until you kill somebody, crash your car to their property themselves, then I don't see an issue. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, before I get into the silver uh, or the, the currency prices, maybe we can talk about the fact that we've been buying silver quite a bit. Um, uh, I really do have quite a bit of silver. Um, I oh, I know that. The amount. Um, but it, basically, I consider it a long-term deposit uh, because you're not going to you touch this cash, or I'm not going to touch this cash for quite some time, um, not until I buy a house maybe or something like that. Um, so I put it away. I put it into silver, put it into silver, put, bought a little bit of gold. Um, <laughs> A little bit. No, I, I don't want to keep the cash because that's going to degrade over time. I mean, actually, this past year, 2014, uh, the U.S. dollar has gained in value, um, but only compared really to um, other currencies across the world because they're all degrading, especially the Japanese yen. Uh, they've been practically hyperinflating their currency right now. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so silver, gold, this is why I'm into that. Uh, Bitcoin is, um, its fundamentals um, are good and sound, but um, I think people are pulling out of Bitcoin right now, and that's why the price is dropping compared to the United States dollar, including the fact that the dollar is gaining value. But um, So that's why... Whatever. Anyway, um, eventually, silver, gold, Bitcoin—they're going to skyrocket, you know, compared to the dollar and any other fiat currency, at least. Uh, yeah, Michael, what do you have to say to that? Well, you, I mean, you gave me quite a mouthful. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so, what do I think about money? Um, I, yeah, I've recently been getting into silver, and this is kind of a new thing for me. Maybe like. Basically, since I started coming on as a co-host of the Currency of Anarchy, um, I'm an influence. Uh, I don't go that far, guy. <laughs> so, so I probably have like I don't know between thirty-five and fifty dollars of silver so far, but between junk metal and a little bit of uh, Sons of Liberty mint. And you got you guys can find them at SonsOfLibertyMint.com. They're in uh, they're I shouldn't say this, but they're more or less coplock.org. They're the same people, so you guys should check that out. They offer great prices. You should also check out amagimetals.com. Best place to buy junk silver, super cheap. Right now it's at like thirteen twenty-five for a dollar face value, which is good, which is pretty good. Um, well, personally, if I'm if you're gonna throw out places, I I go to JM Bullion. Um, they they have decent rates and uh, they don't uh, charge shipping. The right. co the cool thing about Amagi Metals and Sons of Liberty is if I use cryptocurrencies and they accept more than just Bitcoin, they do set, accept a few altcoins. I'm not aware of which ones they are. That altcoins aren't really my thing. Right. Um, well, they're my thing. They're just not my area. I support it. I just don't really use them yet. Um, but if you use Bitcoin on AmagiMetals.com, you get a, a a discounted rate of a, I, I think it's one point five percent, which is doesn't sound like a big number, but I mean you save like three bucks on a, a thirty dollar order if you use cryptocurrencies. So that I, I I'd call that a good incentive. Um, so to get into it, I think that Bitcoin is the for me is a beautiful medium of exchange. 
Um, I, I do a lot of my online shopping with it. I buy my precious metals with it. However, I, I, I'm not sure that it's, it's good for retaining capital. I don't think that you should be saving money with with Bitcoin, um, it's horribly unstable, which is kind of awesome. Like it's very exciting, and and it's going up and going down all the time. And there's all this awesome speculation, so it's really fun. But I'm not sure that it's the best medium to extend, um, you know, yeah, extend your 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 saved monies. Um, so I've, I've kind of come to the conclusion that I'm going to use Bitcoin to trade. I'm going to use Bitcoin to a, a, as a good means of exchange, but I'm going to use silver as savings. Um, I'm not going to put my money – okay, I don't have a lot of money. I'm just like some, some dumb activist veteran, right? Uh, I'm not going to put my money in a bank. I'm not going to put my money in, into fiat – fucking petrodollar USD garbage paper. I'm not going to do that. It's devaluing at a rate like like nothing I've ever seen. Uh, and I'm not going to put it in Bitcoin. I'm not going to put it in a bank account. So I don't see what other options I really have that are viable. I have a question for you, though. Um, when you uh, have a Bitcoin wallet, uh, are you able to... Let, let's say uh, you have a Bitcoin wallet on your phone and uh, you have, I don't know, like a Bitcoin on it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, just a random number. I don't know. All right, all right. Uh, let's say you have a Bitcoin on there and are you able, let's say your phone. I know exactly what you're saying, dude. Look, if you are able to make a physical wallet, you are able to print that off onto a piece of paper with a separate code that is oh. outside of your current online wallet. So it basically generates a new wallet with that code that has that amount of Bitcoin put, put on it. And the only way to get that back is to initiate that code into the interwebs. Okay. That makes so, sense. Like, if you want to save Bitcoin, which I again I strongly don't recommend right now, at least, if you want to, you know, load up your wallet with as much money as you can, print it off, get it off the internet, put it in a safe, and lock it. Um, another another thing to consider, um, as the price of Bitcoin and uh, silver and gold have gone down over the past six months or something like that, um, this is in my opinion, the time to buy as opposed to sell because if you sell now and the price goes up, then it's you're losing money because when you want to buy is on the low and sell on the high. So this might be the time to buy Bitcoin. Uh, I'm not, not going to speculate, but go ahead. I'm not educated enough to even make an argument about silver or gold or platinum or precious metals of any Anyway, but uh, when it comes to Bitcoin, <laughs> every single investor is going to tell you that it's about to be on the rise because they want it to be on the rise. And I want it to be on the rise too, and that's good for everybody. But the fact of the matter is it's, it's incalculable. There's no way to gauge where Bitcoin yeah. is going to go. That's true. Um, and I think that's awesome, uh, like kind of awesome, very, very exciting and entertaining at least. Um <laughs> And yeah, it's in its correction right now. I think still. Well, well, well. Really, we're at a for the past year and a half, we're at an all-time low right now. Yeah. Well, well may, maybe not all time, but very close. Sure. Um. So I really wouldn't recommend. I really just wouldn't recommend saving it. Saving it right now, and and a lot of like you said, now is the time to buy because it's low. Like I. You can't disagree with the logic of you should buy something while it's inexpensive. However, there's no way to determine if it's going to continue to go down because it has been on a downward slope for a year. Yeah. Seven months. Okay, maybe not a year, like seven months at least, yeah. man. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, the same logic could apply to silver and gold as well because they've been going down for six, seven months, whatever it is. And um, <clears throat> uh, gold's all time or gold's high uh, of three years ago was almost nineteen hundred dollars. It was this close, and silver 
went up to almost fifty dollars. It was this close, and then it's been going down ever since. Is that per ounce? Yes. Yes. Okay. Per ounce. Um, now, 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 is that as of of significant a loss as Bitcoin going from sixteen hundred dollars to two hundred and thirty dollars? Uh, no, it's not because uh, silver almost hit. I mean, sorry, gold almost hit uh, nineteen hundred, and it it's down to about twelve hundred right now, and. Silver was at about fifty, and now it's about fifteen. Um, so I I don't think it's quite the same percentage wise. Um, no, it's no, it's totally not. I just meant the um, the significance in in drops, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. And so I don't know. My gut feeling is what's going on overall, economic wise is that the dollar is gaining in value, relatively speaking, excuse me, compared to every commodity, including oil. And this is kind of like the last legs of the dollar, in my opinion, because the yen is being inflated to prop up the dollar. The euro is... Uh, it's it's in a lot of flux right now. And you already lost me. Uh, fucking, yeah, no, fucking Tom yeah, Woods over a here. A lot going on, basically. Let's just say, <laughs> and uh, it, let's just put it this way. What I think is that um, there was a guest on um, so uh, what's his name? I, I, I'm not getting names right now, but uh, somebody has predicted that what what is really going to happen is that the Japanese yen is going to die off because it's being inflated right now through the roof. That's going to die off and then the euro is going to die off and then we are going to die off. And the reason why is because Russia and China are ba um, backing themselves. They're going uh, they're trying to create a new currency um, to get off of the United States dollar altogether. Just like just like the dinar was recently tried, and they are correct to do it. Russia, China, all these other countries want to leave the US dollar as the petrodollar. The problem here is that the United the 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 the, the Federal Reserve note is the only legal medium that is that, that oil is able to be traded in on the world market. And right. Russia, China, Japan, all these other countries are, you know, going away from that terrible idea. Right. And I agree with you up until that, but where I disagree with you is the fact that the United States will kill every single motherfucker on this planet before they let the dollar collapse. They will, man. They're not going to let that happen. I, I understand what you're saying, but what you're talking about is multiple countries – against one country well, not, and that's not completely true because the euro is backing the United States so yeah if, if you that, think it's one co the world against right. one country you're wrong it's like right. half, half. I'm, I'm not saying that what I'm saying is that we're, we're talking about that being the World War three not so much what's going on in the war like theater down in Arabia or whatever it is. <laughs> You know, it's <laughs> you know what's going on is currency. It's all all wars are about currency, especially sure. you know the origination of the United States uh, and then the War of eighteen twelve. It's all it's all about currency. It's about um, monetary power because that's really where the power comes from in the end. So what's going on is China and Russia versus everybody else, and why why we're seeing. Why I'm saying what I'm saying is because of what Japan is going through. They're they're uh, on our team, but they're, <laughs> they're they're hurting themselves, which is gonna hurt the team, as it were. You know what I'm saying? I'm not on your effing Ooh, team. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it's the yeah, right. <laughs> my whole point, my whole point here is that there is only two scenarios that this can play out into. 
either the dollar collapses yeah. as it should or we go into World War III. And I, w I can also argue that we already are in World War III and have been for like 15 years, but that's another topic yeah. for another time. Well, I, I think that what you're saying is what we're seeing is uh, we're, we're going to collapse and we're going to go to war at the same time. We're, it's both. I hope, oh, fuck me, I, I don't want to see any of the three, but I really hope that if one of those things is going to happen that it's just one. Right. I would rather well, see, I would, to be quite honest, I would rather see the USD just continue to go on because I don't have the effort for the happening, man. I just don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to shoot at people. I don't want to, I don't want, you know, I, I like my liquor store. I like my stop and shop. Like, <laughs> I like my Wi-Fi. I just don't want to. I just don't want to do all that. You yeah, know? man. Um, we have about 10 minutes left, and uh, I think what I want to do is just go over the uh, prices right now, and uh, we, we can pretty much finish up the show with uh, Pirate Bay. Okay? Sure. Cool. Yeah, all right. Sweet. Sounds good. All right, so uh, last show we did, uh, that was January 5th. Uh, at 9:31, uh, and <clears throat> tonight I took these prices at 7:53. Tonight being January 12th, silver last show was 16.18. Tonight it's 16.59. That's a 41 cent gain. That's 2.5 percent. Gold last time was 12:04.21. Uh, uh, tonight it's 12:33.01. That's up 28.80. That's Yay. 2 percent. And Bitcoin went down this time from 273.06 to 264.53. That's uh, down. <laughs> that's down 853. That's 3.1 percent. Tonight, what I saw was like uh, right after I took the prices, both silver and gold shot up like 20 cents, 30. Or silver went up 20 cents, 30 cents, and gold shot up a little bit, like. I don't know, five, ten bucks or something. And uh, it was within, I don't know, four minutes, five minutes. Uh, it, it's weird what the markets can do, like really. Um, As, a lot of it's manipulated anyway, but going on. I've only really, you know, my stance on anarchism, libertarianism, uh, libertarianism does not stem from economics. It stems more from non-aggression. Yeah. But I'm also very interested in economics, and I think I'm learning a lot, and like I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm just I'm uh, I, I'm less interested in economic platforms and principles than I am in in uh, what you do and 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 your actions. You know. Um, that's precisely what economics is, though. That's it's just action. It's human action. That that's what I'm learning, uh, and most people disagree when I try to bring make this point. Um, I think that every single human interaction is economics. Yeah. Like like this conversation, for example, we both place subjective value in each other's words, right? So we are making an exchange of words, which is time, which is fucking money, I think. Um, so this is an economic transaction. We are like buying and selling right now. Yes. Um, so I guess that's like reason number three that I could be an ANCAP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, if you come from the perspective that no, uh, no trade should be actually trade is uh, nonviolent uh, exchanges, while sure. coercion is the opposite. It's through the use of force, and so that's where at least Austrian economics comes into play. I think because. <clears throat> All you're talking about is two people making an exchange that they agree upon and they place value in the other thing more than what they already have. So they exchange. And I've I mean obviously I've read some Rothbard and Mises and Hayek and, and whatnot, but uh I do not consider myself well versed in Austrian economics. I, I and I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I'm interested in learning. Like I'm not sure that I that I care. I th I think that the idea is that my philosophy is very simple. Um, you know, so easy a caveman can do it, or a 
a four-year-old girl. It's just kind of the things that you're taught when you're a baby, like you don't hit, you don't steal, you don't co you don't lie and cheat people into things. You know, right. I don't think that that needs this big economic platform to explain. I think it does, and only because there is this economic platform that is against freedom, uh, Keynesian economics or Chicago sure. School or whatever. I think Austrian economics is economics, and it's very important to at least understand the basics and understand bubbles. Well, you don't need to understand all of that shit. I got you. I mean, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's the other side of the coin is all of this. You know, uh, there's the status economics, and then there's economics. <laughs> sure, I, you know, I I understand Keynesian economics to be fucking collectivism, statism, and your the government's just going to steal everything more or less, or a central what I mean, call it whatever you want to, but a centralized, hallucinated authority is going to do what they want with your stuff. Right, but it, it's also um, you know like they validate the use of the central bank. You sure. Know, they, they uh, say, hey, well, it's great to have fiat currency. I got you. I got you. Yeah. yeah if we have, a, if we have a central, if we have a fractional reserve banking system, we're going to be able to avoid things like inflation and horrible atrocities that can happen to the economy. Yeah, I got you. It's no, the same right. thing as the fucking military-industrial complex, man. I, I got you. It's fucking garbage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, exactly. I swore like seven times right there. <laughs> Whatever. But it is. Um, it's fucking garbage, dude. It's just garbage <laughs> ideas. Like, I don't need to read Keynes, man. I don't. I, I no, just, definitely not. Basically, if I believe in Keynesian economics, half of half or more of my stuff is taken by force from other people. So I'm like never going to agree with that. Right. Exactly. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think that about wraps up the whole show. Actually, um, we're about uh, we got about a couple minutes left. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I just would like to shout out Ross, man. Yeah. Go. Yeah, we were going to try to make one more segment about the Ross Ulbrich trial tomorrow. Ulbrich, I think. Uh, we're not going to have the time, unfortunately. So, you know, Ross Ulbrich is being accused of allegedly being um, Dread Pirate Roberts, who is one of the, the creators, administrators, allegedly, of the Silk Road, which is a Bitcoin-based, free, gray, you know, black market online... Um, Agora, like a, a marketplace, and there was allegedly drug sales and other illegal actions allegedly happening there, and I'm going to say allegedly a thousand times, I mean it. <laughs> um, so this dude's been in jail since October 2013, his house was raided, he never victimized a single person, all the kid did was make a website, and uh, he goes on trial tomorrow, and he's he's... He's facing some serious stuff. Um, they're not letting him know who it, who the witnesses accusing him are until I, th I think I think it was this past Friday because the trial is tomorrow. So until five days before the trial, which is not that I believe in the legal system, but by their definition, the right to face your accuser is removed, right? And how are you going to prepare a trial when you're not able to know who the opposition is? How are you going to dig up stuff on them to decredit them, etc.? Um, but the real fact of the matter is, is this person hurt nobody. He set up an online marketplace that, you know, I'm nearly quoting Free Talk Live here, but he either is a hero because he made the black market a, a safer place or he is wrongfully accused. This person supports freedom, supports peace, and supports voluntar voluntary interaction, and he's likely facing life in prison for trying to keep you free and safe. Mm, yeah, definitely. Go to freeross.org. Well said. Um... I, I also noticed uh, we didn't get to talk about Lance Davis tonight, um, and we, we definitely should have him on the show. So I won't add that special clip uh, to the end of this segment. Uh, the end of this show. But um, I think uh, we'll definitely have Lance on. Uh, so Lance, come on the show. So uh, <laughs> if uh, 
uh, actually, uh, the next show we're having uh, Jeff Justice on the show. Um, so he is uh, an, uh, a friend since uh, the summer. Uh, we've been trying to get him on the show, and uh, we're finally going to make it make that happen. So um, we'll talk with him. Uh, I'm not going to mention <laughs> what's going to happen. Uh, I think it will be mostly a debate show, so that would be cool. Um, also, uh, well, what we will say, the only thing we will say is that Jeff Justice disagrees with us. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> You're getting mad, dude. I saw that. Uh, I'm like, uh, I don't know if... Uh, what I know. I, I, generally, I generally do spill the beans, and I would love to, but for, yeah. for, for Josh's respect... <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so the next show will be uh, January 19th. That will be live with Jeff Justice. And this show tonight will be airing uh, on the 14th. That's uh, Wednesday at 3 p.m. So uh, please uh, check that out. And thank you all for watching. Take care. <laughs>